open lectures. And as it is appropriate after Venice, this week is without theory. It's only creative things to be shown. And maybe some theories say a little bit about it, but at the core are artists, photographers, filmmakers. These are the three lectures we have left. But you know Yves Ellen Bois, one of our founding professors here. She will fool you with his laid back manner, but in fact, he is a hardcore structuralist. And it is well, just right. Just smiling, but don't trust him. You know, he's as grim as I am. So don't think uh, it's just a different approach to bring it to you. Anyway, he will introduce us tonight to the work of uh, an artist, a female artist, which might be considered as somebody you would like to invite to EGS. So you have an extra assignment to tell me later if you would think this or that. Don't make any on one hand on, on, on the other hand. OK, Yves. OK. <clears throat> My lecture is based on an essay I just finished for the catalogue of the retrospective of Sophie Kahl at Beaubourg. It will be open next November. There's going to be a huge presentation of all her work and we have half a, half a floor of the Beaubourg building. So it's a very, very big show. As a preamble, I'd like to give you some element of context and to show you very few slides. I won't show any during my lecture proper. And one reason is because She's not, uh, images are not very interesting per se. You have to have the story and the captions and all that, and it's too long to do. So I'll, take, I'll speak more generally about the work and give you the ideas of what she's doing. <clears throat> but first, a little bit of context. Though Cal uh, started making photographs long before she thought about a uh, photo book, it is through such the medium of the photo book that she first gained some attention. So I'll start with the first book called Suite Venitienne, Venetian Suite. It appeared in 1983 and had immediately a huge success. It starts this way, I quote, For months I had been following strangers on the streets. For the pleasure of following them, not because they particularly interested me, I photographed them without their knowledge, took note of their movements, then finally lost sight of them and forgot them. Then she goes on explaining that having, another, having encountered twice in the day the same man, a total stranger to her, the second time it was at an art exhibition opening and she spoke to him, and having learned that he was leaving the next day for Venice, she decided to shadow him and follow him. She takes the next train to Venice and spends a few days finding out which hotel he is at, and she finds him, of course, and tells him during this entire stay, taking pictures of him without being seen and keeping an exact log, uh, log of his every move. At some point, though, he recognizes her despite a, a wig, and they strike a conversation which leads nowhere. In fact, she tries to photograph her from the front, because she was always all photographs from the back, and she said, no, 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 that's not the rule. She resumes her shadowing, and it ends up with her taking a train ahead of him back to Paris, so she can capture his arrival also from the back. So I'll show you a very few slides of that, and then we'll go to the next project. Uh, this is the first. Could you maybe write the name uh, on it? Sophie Kahn? Yeah. So you don't need to really have your eyes down because uh, her image are of no visual interest. That she's very adamant about it. That she doesn't want to produce beautiful photographs ever. So this is the first photograph of the sweet Venetian. It's a man from the back. Next. She wants to show nothing. Right? So, <laughs> no, she wants to show something, but she, she's not interested. So, oh, this is the second, one of the very early photographs of the book. This is when she learns how to use the new camera that allows to photograph people from the side. So it's totally boring. You know, she just shows a trust they made two men having a conversation in a cafe. And she's perfectly happy to test that they, they didn't notice that she was photographing them. Next. Typical boring photo of your book, you know, she had yeah, yeah, just entered that door. <laughs> Next. <laughs> that I don't understand is typical, you know, sometimes you have photographs, 
no idea what it is. You don't know, you have to read the caption for why she did it. That's, you need all the time a very elaborate caption next. <coughs> it's all the same book. Uh, various elements of it. So it's, it's always this man who she follows. Um, okay, next. So she, she, she waits. So he goes and, uh, so you probably went, went around the corner. She waits, if he goes to see a lot of touristic monuments in, in Venice and she waits outside when, she's, when he's in San Marco and when he's in the Academia, she just <laughs> waits. <laughs> Another. Okay. So you've just seen it. Yeah, just okay. Okay, so um, what is, that's the next project. What is interesting in this fantasy, of course, is a voyeuristic structure it implies. The photos are deliberately mediocre, but in them, Kyle, and Kyle underlines the cruelty of the photographic medium. That's always the case. We are all gist to the photographer's mill, all material to be fictionalized. And this fact especially is especially emphasized by the verbose caption that accompany each image. Each image is a very long story. In fact, what would say that she begins with a caption and none of the photograph series would ever make sense without the text. And the text is always hers. That is, she always emphasizes the authorial power of the photographer, all the more acutely visible since the photographs are emphatically not skilled. The only piece in which she lets others, the subject she photographed, speak is also the cruelest. It's also the one in which the photos are beautiful. It's the blind, a piece of which I don't have any slides, in 1986, a very moving piece, um, <coughs> where she, um, each piece is, uh, it's a multi, it's a multi uh, chapter piece. It's, it's, not, it's, it's also a book, but as, as, a, as an installation, it's, it consists of many, many different uh, panels, you would say, um, each for one individual. She asked people blind from birth what was their conception of beauty, and they spoke about it, and so she made a photograph, a very, very beautiful photograph, corresponding to what they said, there's, there's what they said, uh, on, on, on another frame and uh, the, their portrait. And so it's very, very strange, very beautiful and very, very moving at the same time. Also, what's most strange that the, in all these people who are interviewed, there's only one person that speaks about something in relation to touch. It's all visuals, completely crazy. The, 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 the color green, the, the, the blue of the sky, the, you know, really, really weird, very impressive. So I would like to do, that's, and that's one of the very few exceptions there's another one which I'll mention later, uh, called the, 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 the book on obedience. It's, it's uh, one of the very few exceptions. The photographs are professional photography. They're also in color, which she usually never uses. So I'll do a small flashback. Before La Suite Venitienne, Carlin made a, a photograph of people sleeping in a bed. She would ask them to sleep for eight hours and photograph them every hour. She asked 45 people to do that and 28 accepted. The whole thing lasted a week in April 1979, and the photo piece that results is in grid format, almost a prerequisite of this archival mode. Another project of the same nature in the same period, uh, late 70s, early, early 80s, is called The Detective or The Shadow, a photographic series that unites the function of voyeurism and exhibitionism. At Cal's request, a mother went to a detective agency and hired a private eye to follow her, to follow her daughter to report her daily activities and to provide photographic evidence of her existence. And as usual, everything is reported with a minute description given by the SLEUS agency, providing the model for what Carl will do in the Suite Venitienne. Of course, she does not resist trying to spy on her spy, and she has a friend following the, the shadow, and the last image of the book, when it became a book, is uh, him uh, entering a porno shop. Uh, the most spectacular project following the Suite Venitienne, um, <coughs> the photos were done immediately in its wake in February 1981, though the book will only appear in 1984, is the hotel. So here's a few, uh, a few uh, uh, the only photograph in color of the, of the book is um, the cover. The Suite Venitienne actually was, was <coughs> the post passed by Baudrillard, I forgot to mention, uh, when it appeared.